thinking. Yeah, that's perfect. Y'all see what we're doing today? Hey guys. Let me turn it a little bit. It's a wide angle, so. Today, we are representing the Pappard Homestead. We've been so busy, we haven't had a chance to thank them for giving us these t-shirts. Yes, and we all really the jars of canned goods that they give us. Yeah, we've gotten, we've gotten jellies and salsa, our jam, is it jam or jelly? I think it's jelly. Yeah. And uh, salsa from Brandy, and she does such a great job on it. Wow. So, thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate all y'all do for us. Today we're canning some meat. Turkey. Turkey and beef. Yeah. I got a beef roast. I got to cut up and put on the skillet as soon as I get a canner going here. Yeah. This is turkey that we, uh, Les cooked one on the pit and I cooked one in the seven. And uh, I'm going to can it so we can have it on the shelf because I'm getting low. On chicken so instead of chicken we're gonna do this turkey since I had them in, we had them in the freezer do you have to cook the meat so, before you can it you don't have to but with the turkey I would because that's a lot of that's really hard to cut up yeah but you can raw pack but I don't like the way it looks in the jars I have done chicken breast I mean I'm I'm sorry uh, chicken thighs and I'll raw pack them because they come out all right. But beef and chicken breasts, they don't come out looking so nice. But it's still good. I can show you, show you a jar. And Brandy was just asking in her live about canning uh, beans. As a lady did, I told her. Okay. Oh, I thought, it was, I thought it was Brandy. Anyway. Yeah, she, Brandy told her to ask me. Oh, I got you. This is the canned chicken thighs. Oh, ch chicken thighs that she raw packed yeah. and cooked. And I'm gonna tell y'all, this is this is some good stuff. I love making sandwiches out of this. And then you got chicken breast. Canned chicken breast. But I, I kind of you know browned it, cooked Seared it a little, little bit. bit, yeah, and then put it and then put it in there. I cut it up and then put it in there. And then this is the beef. Like steak or? It's like roast. roast. Let me show you a little closer what it looks like. A little beef roast there. This is the chicken breast. I will show you one jar and then it's pretty much. And this is the, the raw chicken uh, thighs. Yes. Raw thick chicken thighs that she Boneless. did. Boneless, okay. So whenever I see meat on sale, I try to pick it up and I'll put it in it. Yeah, it keeps you from having to keep it in the freezer. She's also been canning carrots all day yesterday. And I canned some pineapple over here to this and morning. Pineapple and all that cabbage we got, Charlie and Brandy. Not all of it, but a lot of it. She dehydrated and put it in these jars and vacuum sealed it. Be real careful because they're still hot. And these are the pineapples. Did you water bath can these? Yeah. And I didn't put anything, I just put a, tea, a little teaspoon of lemon juice in them keep and the, water. Keep the color. No sugar, no simple syrup. No simple syrup for the pineapples. Yeah. And then right yeah. here. The pineapples are very sweet anyway. In this crock pot. I don't, can they see that? Uh, let me see. Yeah. I put all the bones in there from the turkey. And I threw in some dehydrated onions, celery, and carrots, and garlic. And I'm gonna, so this is gonna cook for three days, and then I'm gonna um, strain it and make some turkey broth. So that's what's going on in there. So we've got a lot of projects going. So I just learned this yesterday that to make the, the broth from bones and scraps, it takes three days to cook. <laughs> so, but I've tried her uh chicken broth that she's uh I've made ham broth and ham broth i yeah. used the ham broth in my beans one time and man it really popped the flavor of them beans out okay so here's my meat 
And I'm doing them in wide mouth, mouth jars. I'm just going to do one for y'all. That's all I'm going to do. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm just going to do this with hot water. And I'll show y'all. Now, when we, we cooked the meat, when we cooked these turkeys yesterday, we seasoned them. Yeah. Uh, with different seasonings. So, um, just to try them out, they bought, the one that came off the pit was very kind of a smoky flavor with some saturies. And the ones she did in the oven uh, were very juicy and flavorful as well. And she's going to pour the water up to the line. To the one inch mark. To the one inch mark. If y'all do canning, y'all know what it is. If not, I will show you on an empty jar. Or I'll show you on one of these jars. The one inch mark when you're canning is this bottom line right here. That's what you fill your liquid to. And then I will uh, take the air bubbles out. I may have to add some more water to it. This is these jars were washed and they're ready to go. I'm putting hot water in these, so they're gonna go into a hot canner. So this this is our product here. Okay. You clean the rim with a uh, yes. vinegar uh, yes. napkin? Yes, because meat is greasy. So and this meat is greasy. So this is all you do. Clean it. This is how I do it. Everybody does things differently, so you need to educate yourself on canning. Yeah, because I think in different parts of the state... I may miss something. You know, you never know. So. There's different um, pressures for canning yes. and times and stuff like that. I can't find my... Uh, magnet. Magnet right now, so I'm trying to be real careful here. So you put this on. Fingertip tight. Not too tight. And there you go. There it and is. It's going into the canner. And when we get, when she gets done with all this meat, I will do um, an ending video. Yeah, I'm gonna pressure can this meat for 75 minutes, which is an hour and 15 minutes. And I have my canner's been, I, I have it on level, keeping it warm. Y'all, if y'all ever have in any... our where we live, we do 10 pounds of pressure. So you have to look it up and see what your pressure is. Your time is always going to be the same, but your pressure will be different. So this is the, the thing that you put on top. And this is 10 pounds. And then there's another weight that's 15 pounds. And then if you don't use, it's just 5 pounds. So we're 1,000. 1,000 uh, feet above sea level. Mm -hmm. So we use um, 10 pounds of pressure. So the higher you are up, uh, or the lower you are, the, the less or more pressure you'll have to use. Yeah. I'm just going to kind of go through this with you real quick, okay? I've already wa I washed everything really good because I used it yesterday. Uh, you know, you check your, your ring here, your rubber ring, make sure it's on correct. Um, you're going to check this hole right here to make sure there's no obstruction. And you can kind of lift it up and look into the light and you can see... You see the light it's good to go so when I get through filling these jars which I'm using wide mouth so my canner only holds eight I will put this lid on and turn the heat up and bring it up until it starts steaming through this and then I will uh, let it steam for 10 minutes put my gauge on here and wait for it to start jiggling and then regulate my heat and when it starts jiggling i will start my time for 75 minutes now what do you regulate your heat for uh so it doesn't shake you don't want it shaking too fast you want it at a, a steady a steady easy we can show them yeah they'll show y'all okay it's right here so i have to stuff everywhere so anyway so that's it for right now and okay. I will fill up the rest of the jars. If y'all ever have a pressure canner and you're having trouble getting the pressure to build up in there, it takes a long time to get the pressure built up in it, um, go to Amazon and order you a new, new uh, rubber ring. Yes, you need uh, a new they're, ring. They're fairly cheap. You can get one with a combination of jiggler and um, pop-off valve as well. Well, when you order your rubber ring that's inside there, you get a, a little uh, the little black 
Pop on. Yeah. And that you put, you put that in as well. New. Well, so. And that really helped her out because she was taking forever to get yeah, things. Yeah, it was taking forever for this thing to pop up. So. Anyway, we'll be back. She's filling all her jars up with the turkey meat with the boiling hot water. Getting them debubbled with her chopstick. Or is that a debubbler? It's just a stick. <laughs> this is easier. I had all that stuff. It just gets in there a little bit better. Everything's staying at, under or right at the one inch mark. Might have picked some of this meat out. I think I'm there though. All right, we'll be right back. Clean up my, my trash to myself. Cleaning all her lid, her rims. It's very, very important that you do this on anything that you're canning. Don't want to your jars to not seal and if you buy the um the lids uh and they're not ball or what is the other good brand Kerr bar uh there's there's new ones out four jars this must be really good i've heard it's um, called four jars i'm gonna order some of those when i run out of what i have because the one she has now you have to really boil or get in real hot water to get the rubber soft enough to seal it's thick it's a thick rubber, so. But they seal. Yeah. We'll be right back. Okay. Don't ever touch the rubber. The rubber Keep is... your hands, well, because I don't have my, want my magnet, but I just keep my hands on the outside. My fingers on the outside. Okay, put it on. Gonna put your rings on. You only want to do fingertip tight. These bands are just keeping the flat part down until it seals. Okay. So that's their purpose, nothing else. So you don't want to crank it, you just want to turn it and then just a tad bit more. That's it. Let's get this thing to jiggling. Okay, fresh so um there's three quarts of water in here and this is what my canner takes there's a line mark in there it's usually over here on this side and i fill it to that line okay so they're ready to roll i turn my heat up on high so it'll get going and it's time to put the lid on all right there's an arrow i'm going to match it up to this arrow you should go right on, turn it, and let it roll. Just waiting for the steam now. It'll be a while. So you don't you don't put the shaker on here until you see steam coming out, right? Until it has steamed for ten minutes. After oh, it starts steaming, you time it for ten minutes. Okay. And then you put it on. All right. Okay. What you doing? I had a roast in the freezer that got lost, so I'm gonna cook it, brown brown it, and we're gonna can it. Every time she does this, it comes out so tender. Sorry. <laughs> you can cut it out. Okay. Okay, my ten minutes was up. I put this on. This has popped up. Yeah. Okay. So now we're waiting for it to do start jiggling and then we will set the timer for 75 minutes. Which is an hour and fifteen minutes. Yes. And 
Y'all know uh, we started this video representing the Pafford family, yeah. how we started it. And we were kind of nervous that we were doing everything right. We didn't really know if we were going to do all this stuff right. And somebody had a, I guess somebody put a bug in somebody's ear because look who came to help us. <laughs> they supervised. Make sure we're doing it right. We snuck up on them. <laughs> so we'll be back when we get this done and we're going to visit with these fine folks here. So y'all just got through doing a live. Yes, we did. Yep. So this is Sunday, guys. Y'all probably won't see this. I'm going to show this screen. And we'll be back. All right. I did get... Um, That's about the jiggle you want, right? That's what I'm working on it. I'm trying to get it lower. Just a little bit lower. And she uh, has an hour and right 15 here. minutes. Do you ever see me? Very Okay. This is chicken thigh meat. Okay. chicken thigh Our meat. best friends are over here. So, it looks like, um, talking canning. Okay. Okay, it's okay, so for an hour and 15 minutes, and we had to wait for this thing to drop. Okay. Okay, it was up. Now it's dropped. So your scanner is safe. To pull this off. No steam. You're gonna turn it. Get away from you. Get the steam. Okay. Safety first. You gotta Let's tip it over here for let it sit for about five minutes. There they are, bubbling away. Now this is the beef, guys. Y'all saw us start with the, the it's turkey. Beef and turkey. Oh, it's beef and turkey. Yeah. Beef and turkey. You gotta have this special tool here to get them out with. I'm just gonna lift one up and show you. Then you just sit for a few minutes so that. He can finish his video. So I got three beef out of that roast and uh, five turkey. So this is the end. You use this part. Okay. Kind of shipped around the jar. Mm -hmm. And there's the turkey. And it's a roaring. Still cooking. Yeah. I'm gonna put it back down in here for a few minutes. Alright, will you let that sit? And then I will show you. I think this is a beef. Let's see if I can get it. Oop, turkey. Beef. Look at that. Okay. Doesn't that look good? That would be good in anything. I need to rest for a minute, about five minutes. And, and this, this is, is all that I did this weekend. Yep. Uh, dehydrated cabbage. Mm -hmm. Vacuum sealed crackers. Yeah, a bunch of crackers. Real, real quick, I want to tell y'all, um, if you have crackers, you can vacuum seal them in bags. But the pressure from the bags will crush the crackers. So you can vacuum seal them in the, um, in the jars. And they'll last forever. We have... Canned pineapple. Mm -hmm. 10, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. I got 14 because there's one in the house. 14 canned pineapples. Mm -hmm. And then 13 carrots. 13 jars of and carrots. And these are with Lipton onion soup mix. So oh, you know those are going to be good. Yeah. A teaspoon per jar. Okay. And then more crackers because I had more boxes. And then these are the turkey. They all sealed. Everything sealed. Yeah, I just did these plain old water. The ones in the canner I did with Lipton and the soup mix. Oh, nice. So, That's on behalf it. of the Long Star Pioneering family, mm -hmm. brought to you from the Hafford Homestead, we thank y'all very much for watching us, and uh, God bless each and every one of y'all. I'm going to say something. Okay. I'm just showing y'all how I do it when I can. Yeah. You need to research and find uh, videos and read on canning. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned from several different uh, YouTubers. Uh, Bev from our half 
Acre Homestead, The Needy Homesteader, mm -hmm. Sutton Days, and then Homestead Heart. Those are my my ones that I go to. Oh, and Linda's Pantry. I started out watching her too. So find resources that you trust and go with that. I'm new canner. I've only been doing it a couple of years, so I'm not a very good instructor, but I will show you how I do it. But yeah. always refer and do your research um, and make sure you're doing it correctly because you do not want to um, do all this work and then you have failed lids. Yeah. And then your product is ruined. So um, I just want to, you know, make that clear to y'all. And also, I saw a few questions on the dehydrated cabbage. There's some videos out there on that as well, but you can use dehydrated cabbage. And uh, Dave Collier was saying it might be good for um, what is his camp? What's his channel? Dave Collier Camping. Yeah, Dave Collier Camping. He said it might be good for um, you know camping a, ca a camping food. Yeah. Because it doesn't take long to rehydrate. No. So uh, if you're you know looking into preserving your food look at all aspects don't just do one you know dehydrate mm -hmm. um, can and then you know freezer vacuum seal vacuum seal so um, you have you know different methods there that you can we haven't gotten to cu use. Uh, curing yet but it's something that we've been talking about yeah, fermenting so, I want to do fermenting fermenting so and curing so mm. anyway guys we're gonna end this God bless y'all tell your loved ones you love them because you never know what tomorrow brings Thank you, uh, Charlie and Brandy and Autumn, for coming by and hanging out with us today. Yeah, they came by to visit. We appreciate that. Y'all probably sent them in the video earlier. They brought us the sweet potato. Look at the sweet potato they got. I can't even believe this thing grew uh, vines like that without dirt, but it did. Just in the cabinet. Uh, sweet potato slips. What, what's her uh, cosmic cultivator? What's uh, Gina? Gina, look at this. Very interesting. So I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to lay it in some dirt and see if I can get some more slips off of it. You can see little knobs that are here. They're going to probably start coming up. Yeah. But what you do is, once I get to this point, I'm probably going to take these. Well, not this one, but the longer ones. I'll break them off. You break them off and you put them in water and they'll start producing some roots. So that's how you get it. So basically how mine are doing right now is I have them laying in dirt and I covered them all the way up to here and the slips start growing from up underneath and they come up so very interesting just they have this in their claw in their pantry <laughs> and it started growing that's pretty so, cool i'm excited to um that's a different uh variety is. that we had last year because i don't remember ours being purple no but the ones that i'm growing right now yeah i mean the slips that i've got coming up they're like this a little oh bit. are they yeah. okay so I'm, uh, i think it's gonna be a different all right, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this long video. And people have been asking us to do some canning videos, so here y'all are. I hope y'all enjoyed it. We got a lot more to come. Gardening seasoning is, is upon us. And we got a lot of stuff to show y'all. Have a good night.